So here's a video I took in my lab of a pendulum swinging back and forth. Uh, let's use Tracker here to explore how this thing moves. So we'll first need a set of axes. We're gonna try to put the axes where the uh, pendulum is tied down. So I'm gonna try to get the pendulum out here so I can find that. Uh, yeah, that'll go right about there it looks like. Uh, let's see, I might need to rotate this just a little bit because I want to get the vertical axis parallel with my rod here. My video is, uh, my camera was tilted ever so slightly, but that's okay. I just have to adjust the axes to match. There we go. And then we need a length scale. So we'll go uh, measure, calibration tools, calibration tape, I think is what we want. So we gotta go, no? Ah, okay. So we'll go here and then we'll go here. And we need to tell the computer that this is one meter. It thinks this is almost a kilometer. <laughs> Don't know what video I would be shooting where that would be a kilometer, but there we go. Uh, so this is now gonna be one meter uh, going across there. And that gets me the orientation and the scale for all of my position measurements. And now comes the interesting part is seeing whether we can automatically track this thing. <clears throat> so let's go to, and now I'm a little bit worried about the color of this pendulum bob matching the color of the meter stick, but we'll see. Uh, let's see, let's go to track new and I want a point mass. Yep, cool. All right, let's rename this pendulum bob. And uh, yeah, red color is fine. I will, we won't have too many tracks going on here. All right, let's see if we can go to Auto Tracker. All right, to create a new keyframe, Shift Control click the video feature of interest. Mouse over the controls above. Learn more about settings and adjustments. All right, so we're gonna go Shift Control click here. And so now the template here shows what the uh, what the thing look is looking for. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see if we can, let's see how well we do finding it one piece at a time. Uh, so let's try search next. Oh, excuse me. I did not want to skip something. Go search. Nope. Uh, go. Nope. Already a problem. Yep. It went to the, it went to the meter stick there. All right. Let's go delete. Clear all. All right, shift control, let's try getting to the top of it then. Shift control, click. Okay, yeah, let's see if it can find the top of this thing. Uh, let's see, you can always change the window that this looks for. So let's try expanding this viewpoint just a little bit. Very good. Now let's move it down because I don't want to try to catch the background with it. Okay, let's try search next. Nope, it jumped down there. Okay, let's go over to here. Now let's tell it to search within this window. Uh, let's see, search this. Nope, try searching in here. Search this. Okay, let's go up. Can I move this one? I can move this circle, no. Okay, I think that's enough. Uh, we can put the end slider over here and we'll ask to stop. Cool, so I got a few oscillations here. I've got one, two, three maxes and one, two, three minima. Uh, so I've got a pretty good number of oscillations there. Uh, this is the X versus time. Remember we saw earlier that that's a sine or cosine of a sine or cosine, right? So it's, it's a trig function of an oscillating function. Uh, we get similar thing for the Y here. I do notice the Y is bottoming out just a little bit. I, I suspect that's an issue with it. Yeah, see how it's, it's kind of bottomed out here? That's an issue with it moving on the pendulum bob. So that might affect uh, our angle that we get just a little bit. 
But what we're really interested in is measuring this angle from the vertical here. So let's try to get the position angle. There we go. And you notice this is oscillating around negative uh, 0.9 radians, right? So it's oscillating around negative pi over four, because if you go, if you call this zero radians, uh, sweeping over here is going to be negative pi radians. So sweeping in here, it's going to be negative pi over two radians. And pi is about three. Pi over two is about 1.5. So pi over four is, pi over four is 0.9. I mean, it's honestly, I mean, there might be some kind of offset to the angle or something. You know, I might, I might not have this thing rotated exactly correctly. So anyway, yeah, this thing, it kind of looks like a sine or cosine. So we've got a pretty good uh, small angle approximation going on here. Um, our total difference, right? That's the thing that matters. Oh, excuse me. This is not in radians. This is in degrees because I have a times 10 to the 2 up here. And so this is in degrees. Okay, yeah, yeah. It does start right at negative 90 degrees there. Okay, that... That does match my that does match my expectations. All right, cool. So we're going from 90 up to 55 here. So we're going a difference of about 45 degrees, right? 90 minus 55. Ah, goodness. Always be careful when you're doing subtraction. Oh, excuse me, 35 degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going about 35 degrees here. Uh, so let's try 35 degrees in radians. I'm always interested to evaluate, you know, how far out that small angle approximation works. Uh, I mean, this is going out to 0. 0.6 radians. Uh, and that still counts as a small enough angle to get basically a, uh, a, a, sinus, a, a, a nice sine curve on this as opposed to what we'll see later with a large angle approximation. Uh, we might also look at, now there's a difference here between the velocity angle because that's the angle that the velocity vector makes, which is interesting, uh, versus the uh, rotation angle here and the angular velocity, right? So the angular velocity is how quickly it is spinning. And it looks like a, a negative cosine graph, just like the velocity was a, uh, was a negative sine graph. This thing's going to be a... Uh, a negative cosine graph, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, what is our maximum angular velocity? Is 1.4 times 10 to the second degrees per second. So 140 degrees per second. 140 degrees per second in, let's try radians per second to get an idea of what that is. So we top out at just under two and a half radians per second. So where it gets the fastest, down at the bottom of the swing. All right, let's make sure we get that fastest part at the bottom of the swing here. Pause. Yep, sure enough, we reach our minimum. We reach our one of our fastest points here at the bottom of the swing, just like you would expect. Good. Basic physics is holding so far. Uh, so that right there, that blur right there, is what two and a half radians per second looks like. Uh, I wonder at what point we reach one radian per second. Uh, if I go back just a couple frames, this dot right here is at about one radian per second. So the speed it's going right now is about one radian per second. So right when it reaches about here, that's about a radian per second. Good to know what that looks like. Uh, what about revolutions per second? How fast is this in revolutions per second? Uh, oh, they call it turns per second. I like that. I like that. Uh, so that's at about, uh, our maximum speed here is at about 0.4 revolutions per second. Okay. Okay. So not terribly fast there. That's pretty cool. Let's go now to the part where I gave this thing a much larger angle of oscillation. We'll put our slider at the first frame here. All right. This is probably not the best frame to try to get a... Uh, an auto tracker. So we'll see what happens with this. Uh, tracker control, I want a, a new point mass. Um, let's give this one a new name of Pendulum Bob Part 2. There we go. Uh, and let's try to auto track this thing. Uh, if not, we can also try to manually track it. All right, control, shift, click to get it here. Good. Uh, let's see. 
let's make this window just a little bit bigger. And actually, let's make it squat like this so that it's getting the line along the edge here. Hopefully that'll be unique enough. Uh, all right, let's try searching. Oh, okay, it found my bulletin board over there. Uh, so let's uh, try this region here. Search this, there we go. Now it found my whiteboard. All right, so I ended up doing this manually, not the most fun thing in the world. Uh, you notice it looks a little bit different, right? So for the X versus time, the peaks and the troughs are a little bit broader than they were. Uh, the Y on the other hand is actually narrower. That's interesting. Uh, let's try the uh, rotation angle here. Yeah, it's, it's still, I mean, it's still matching decently well to a sine or cosine. At least it looks like. At least it looks that way. You can see that the midpoints here get near the near the equilibrium position are getting sharper, though, right? Like like this is getting sharper than it was before. Uh, let's see. We're actually going out to thirty degrees now. Uh, only thirty degrees. Is that only 30 degrees? I guess so. Oh no, excuse me. We're getting to a maximum of negative 30 from negative 90. So yeah, so we're going 60 degrees now. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that looks more like a 60 degree angle. So even 60 degrees might be enough to give you a small angle approximation. Here's our angular velocity. This is where it starts to look different, <clears throat> right? Because this is starting to look a little bit more like a sawtooth, right? Just because it's going so much straighter here. And you know, it's, it's less sinusoidal and more V-shaped. Right? It's, yeah, it's less U-shaped, more V-shaped. So that's really interesting. So this is telling me that we're getting away from the small angle approximation, which is pretty cool. Uh, we can look at angular acceleration. Yeah, it's going to be a mess because it's taking two derivatives at that point. So the acceleration data is usually too much of a mess to do anything with. Uh, let's see. Do they have angular momentum in this? They do not have angular momentum. They have kinetic energy. That's That's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. You can show conservation of energy on this if you define the potential energy, right? It doesn't know what type of potential energy you're working with. So let's add a parameter G uh, to be 9.8. We go. Here's our G. Here's our 9.8. So, for example, I can add a PE as an m times g times, uh, let's make that y, yeah? Uh, oh, excuse me, I need, um, oh yeah, because I can name things multiple names, so I do need asterisks in between those, there we go. Didn't know if I needed them when I, when I clicked on them. All right, so I'll hit close on that. So I can look at kinetic energy here, I can look at potential energy, right, which you see is oscillating opposite of that, uh, let's see, there is usually a way I can graph two of these. Plot two? Yeah, okay, okay, I can, I can graph them on top of each other here. So I can have the kinetic, the potential energy one, the kinetic energy the other, and what you notice is that they're going opposite of each other, just like we saw in Algo do, where a minimum in the kinetic energy is a maximum of the potential energy, minimum in the, in, Minimum in the potential energy, maximum in the kinetic energy, and they go opposite of each other. So you can also define a total energy. Uh, let's go add to data function here. Uh, total energy, we'll call it. All right, so we're gonna do kinetic energy plus potential energy to get our total there. And this is the part where I always remind students that this window is always gonna auto scale and so you look at this and think, oh my goodness, this thing is, you know, oscillating all over the place. Remember, this is oscillating around 3.4 between 2.8 and 3.8. So it's only oscillating by a, a fraction of a joule, 
right? Uh, so what I can do is take this off of auto and say we put the maximum here to zero. Now it looks more reasonable because now I'm getting an idea of the size of the oscillations compared with the value. And that energy is staying pretty roughly constant, right? I mean, remember, there's an error in where I click on the screen. That error gets compounded when I take a slope to get the velocity. That gets compounded even more when I square that velocity to get the kinetic energy. And so, you know, it's a wonder this thing ends up being flat at all, right? It's, it, it's, you know, it really depends on how well you click inside the screen. So we're actually getting pretty good there on the total energy. Now the total energy being negative, not really significant because remember PE for gravity is MGY. And so depending on where I place my um, coordinate system, right? I might move this thing around and then it completely changes the value for the potential energy, right? I could, I could place this thing, for example, at the bottom of the swing and then all my potential energies are positive and then I actually need to, uh, let's re-auto scale this thing. And now I need to have my total energy bottom out at zero. It's the same pattern, right? Cause you can shift energy around and it, 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 the, the base value doesn't matter, right? It matters for kinetic energy cause kinetic energy has to be uh, non-negative. But for the potential energy here, you know, it, you're, 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 you're going to get the same shape no matter what. It's just a question of what that center value is. Cool. So that's a nice reminder of how the motion of a pendulum works. Uh, next time we'll take a look at modeling this thing with the uh, Lagrangian mechanics and see if we get this.